and I'm trying to fuck. Come on, like you're a fucking well, badass motherfucker. Like, yeah, well, we met you, and like, dude. Well, like, I guess on that, um, it's just great. So I know, like, we mentioned it. You were obviously in the army. You were serv- You were yeah. you were in the service, and you mentioned you were in Baghdad. Yeah. You mind talking about that a little bit? Like, kind of, what was your experience with that? Yeah, sure. Um, um, we got we got a little serious right now. <laughs> we we got a little bit. We serious. Got a little serious, but yeah. no, no, no. Because that brings a good point. Yeah, like, like, so we race, have a huge military community, which here. a lot of people know here and Fort Bliss. Yeah. Uh, I think it's known all over the states. Because I always hear well, people always like, "Oh, you live in El Paso." Like, it's like Fort Bliss is there. It's like, yeah, dude. Like, but yeah, the thing because a lot of people don't realize how big Fort Bliss and how important it is. Because oh, yeah, I remember was. when it was like January. When everyone was thinking we're gonna to go to World War III, and everybody was saying like, "Shit, man, COVID. <laughs> there's nuclear war. We're screwed because Fort Bliss is right here." Yeah. No, uh, I tell you what, man. Like, and that and that's a huge problem too. Is like, you you have people that in the military that are are from all over the world. I mean, all over the world, not just from the yeah, United yeah. States, but like, man, all over the world. Um, awesome German bar uh, and Fort Bliss, and dude. And you are gonna have really close-minded people, but and again. Like you can't just like put everybody into like one category, you know what I mean? Like, and I think that's that's why I go by Emberflow. Yeah. You know, like uh, typically I don't throw my name out there. I'd rather people see it as like, hey, oh shit, you're Emberflow, and I like your work, you know, um, and you seem like a really cool dude. And there are a lot of people out there that are that are just like that, you know. Um, man, we, we use it, nicknames for everything. Like it's yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, well, I guess because you were in the military at the time, like it was like, well, yeah, you're yeah. an overflow. Like, you, you know, know, at the time you didn't want to use your name because yeah. you're still involved. I guess in my, my, what I'm getting, like you were still involved when you were doing this. You yeah. started doing art, so you just like, yeah. I didn't want people to know. Same way how when I was teaching, you know. like I was six balls, people didn't have to know like I was teaching. Mm-hmm. But it's also like it's a big community. Yeah, I know my name is. Weird. But I like it too. Like when you just throw like an alias on there, right? Nobody knows who the fuck you are. Is it male? Is it female? Is it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it doesn't fucking matter it's because I'm just looking at the work, right? And a lot of times when I post it, you know, it's like, it's under Ember Flow. I try to limit, like, it, I try to minimalize, minimalize as much as I possibly can my my own personal, like, face pictures yeah. on my, on my. That's the same thing I do with my Right? Face. Like, yeah. so that way people just look at the work and they're not judging it, like, oh, it's a you white know. guy. It's a Mexican. It's black. Whatever. Yeah. Like, dude, like, it's no, exactly. An artist. It's a right. creator. You know, like, I love it, man. Like, my buddy Mask. He's <laughs> he's mask. he's from here. El pa- from, he's from here in El Paso. He's a veteran. You know what I'm saying? But he's not a turd. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, he's not. He's it's, a, it's it's just a bad thing. Like, we have. I guess. Fuck. We're gonna get political with this shit. I guess right now, just having the president that we have, like, makes it sound like. Dude, like, even if you're in the military, you don't really have to yeah. fight. You don't follow him. You don't have to follow him to be a military guy. Yeah, yeah. Like, you just want to be there for your country. Yeah. But you have different ideals. You are a creator. You can be whatever you want to be. But can I be real, man? I never joined the military because I was like, dude, I'm so patriotic. Like, if I'm being real, um, I I joined because, dude, I, I grew up in a poor fucking family. And this is how the system works. You know what I mean? I grew up in a poor family. And I was like, hey, you know, I, I did you know, up until about 25, I, you know, I was doing my artwork and stuff and hanging out and partying with my friends and this and that. And I remember I was like, man, I need to get it together. And what can I do? You know what I mean? Because I was just working at restaurants. Yeah. Dude, I worked at like so many different restaurants, you know, like and I was just like not doing anything productive, you know, and and I was like, man, what can I do? And my cousin came out and was like, hey, man. You know, uh, go to El Paso. look, look at what I have. And it was hard not to look at what he had. He had a fucking big house and he had, uh, you know, he had like two cars. I, dude, I was driving like an 86 F-150. Damn, that was like, <laughs> dude, it looked like it had been to Iraq and back, you know, <laughs> like that was, that was the thing we were talking earlier. It was like, there's yeah, nothing like, like driving. Dude, like, like, did you go I was working at these, car. Uh, yeah, I was looking, I was working at these restaurants and I remember like, these ladies that worked with me at these restaurants were like, Oh, you don't have a Mustang. Like, yeah, and I'm like, no, I just have this 86 F 150. And they would like make fun of my, my truck. 
But the funny thing is, is like when you would pull up to like a party with like two kegs in the back of that 86 F-150. Now everybody's your best friend. Yeah, then everybody wanted to be your friend. Yeah. And All it was like, hey, like get away from my truck. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. It's I, a misconception. Like people are like, oh, like you're going to buy a fancy car, whatever. It's like. I grew up fixing cars and everybody, and I grew up racing yeah. too. So it's like everybody's like, oh, you're going to buy muscle cars. Like, don't get yeah. me wrong, I love muscle cars, but there's nothing like driving a reliable car. It's like, I have, like, my daily driver is a fucking 4 Edge. Yeah. It's like, it's fucking dad's car. It's like, yeah, but I fit everything you want in yeah. there, motherfucker. Like, I can drive, like, I love my Bronco at the time, my 69 Bronco. Shout out to all I can't say anything, I drive a Mustang. Yeah. Dude, what if we can't. No, I mean, look, it's a great car. There's there's an upcoming, right? You probably didn't. I don't know. Maybe you did. I don't know. But I'm just saying, like, I didn't start off with like a really nice car. Oh, no, I did. I started off with like (laughs) and I was I was telling him earlier that like when 9-11 happened, that was the day that I went and I got my first fucking car (laughs) and I picked it up. I picked it up from a, a fire department that was just getting rid of their piece of shit cars. And that was my first fucking car. It was a Corsica. Frank, oh. And I called it Frankenstein because they had left like name, they left like all the bolts on it and whatnot. And <laughs> man, dude, it was embarrassing because you'd be like at like a stoplight and, and you would like looking at it. And no, not oh. not just that, but like it would stall out at the light. So I was like that guy. Like That's sorry, man, I'm trying to like my fuel injection's not working so great they right now. They were Britney. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, no, I mean I can't say anything. I had a pretty decent, actually, first car. My first car was a 2009 Pontiac G6. So now, it was actually a pretty nice car. But I learned, to, nice I learned car. to drive in like a, what was it, a 98 Mercury van. Yeah. That was a car I drove for the longest time before yeah. I got that car. I mean, I was lucky enough Damn, my those, parents yeah. were able to get me a pretty cool car. But, but I, I, and, I, and I think it comes back to like, you know, people assume that like because of the things you might have right now. Yeah, it's know. like you're having it now because... It's time for you to like enjoy what you're doing. Guess well, what? bro, we I also what... did like a lot of like sacrifices yeah. to get to where Guess I'm at. What? You we know? have what we have now because we worked for it. Our yeah. pa- our mommy and dad didn't get it for us. If somebody particular Do- is listening, just throw <laughs> it out there. Dot com. Yeah, for sure. Sh- hey, we work for it. Dot like, com. We, we we ate shit. We yeah. kissed a lot of ass. Absolutely. I don't we... just feel sorry for myself. I know, right? <laughs> it's like. <laughs> I'm just it's saying. like one of those things where it's like, dude, I, I talk to my wife and like my wife will tell me like her stories about growing up in Wise, you know, and when she shows me pictures, I'm like, holy shit, dude. Like, I know those ones, that too. was a fucking box. I grew up you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. And that's how they grew up. But you know what? That's why they aspired to be like who they are. My yeah. Like, like God bless my wife, dude. Like they're her and her sisters. They're all like nurses. Yeah. And they're they're, they're, they're like, contributing to this community and not only just contributing to this community, but like think about COVID times like. Still going in and doing their their thing, you know, and it's like, hey, you know, like, man, if who knows what I'd be doing right now if I didn't meet my wife here in El Paso. Right. Like, like, who knows what I probably wouldn't even be having these conversations with you guys. How long have your wife been together? Also, props to her because you're back in school and she was fine with it. Yeah, dude. Like like, a lot of people, a lot of like a lot of like wives wouldn't be okay with it not no, saying like everybody and but we had kind of we had kind of come up with a plan where we were like hey look you know what you're you're helping me out with school like and my kids like while you know while you're in the service yeah. right and then i was like all right are you ready and you're prepared like i'm gonna get out i'm gonna get out of the service i'm gonna leave it like after 10 years and i'm gonna go to school and now like everything i've been doing is like now on you like yeah. and that and that's what I want to say to people too is like, dude, if you're in a marriage or a relationship or whatever, like teamwork. Don't fucking give up. Teamwork, man. Like that's how you that's how Teamer you come up. Like teamwork. you need a good that, you need a good things, partner. You need a good. That's one of the things. Uh, like earlier, I had a conversation with a friend of mine because they broke up, and the way he broke up with her was like a fucking trash way, fucking messages. And then she's over like, text over text. And then the thing that was like, pissed me off. And I thought like, that's a, that's a motherfucking cunt. Mm. Cause he was like, Oh, Hey, at least uh, he didn't just get blocked on everything. That's how he found oh, out. Cool. <laughs> uh, sorry, Caesar. <laughs> no, but like the thing he <laughs> said, <laughs> he's like, Oh, like people are just for uh, memories. What? I don't know. I was like, Oh, he told her yeah. people are just for memories. It's like, so was he ever really there? Like no, that's stupid. Like you have a relationship is nah, that's a just partnership. A, it's a hundred and a hundred percent. It's not yeah. 50, 50 It's that's hundred and hundred. That's just a real ignorant douchebag way of. Oh well, up I well, think it goes back I'm, to that. I'm whole gonna say thing. thing is like sorry. I'm gonna mention her. Gabby is like, but he 
it's a fucking DJ. What do you expect? Yeah. No, and I think it goes back to that thing where it's like about the reaching out and, and pulling each other up. You know, like, yeah. dude, we're humans. Yeah, and we, we all need make and we need support and we need each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's so funny. Like, don't be afraid. You just like ask for something. Like, even if it's like a fucking the like, smallest thing. It's like, hey, dude, like, I'm saying like a smallest thing is like, like hey, I need a napkin. It's like, dude, like, yeah, that's cool. I'll yeah. give you a napkin. Like I need fucking like I need and a marker. Napkin. Yeah, I don't have it. Anymore. I gave you guys, <laughs> I gave you guys some prints that you guys have inside. Yes, which um, we're thankful for that. Yeah, and there and there is one. There's a print in there, uh, and it has two. It has two figures that are like back to back with each other, and it's called like uh, when the crows come. And uh, back when I was in Germany, I remember before I deployed, this print that I had done. So it has like two figures, um, and it's called when the crows come. So I'm gonna sit it down so that way it doesn't blow away. Here, I can kind of. All right, there you go. Show it real quick. So. So, anyways, it, it it really represents like this uh, time in life where I was in the in the military, and you know, um, back then we used to have to sit back to back, oh. uh, like when we would eat our meals or when we would, you know, just be in the field, you know, uh, working alongside of each other, and. Um, you know, it, it was one of these things where the the crows represented kind of like death, you know, because when I was in Germany, uh, these crows just showed up to a formation one time when we were in front of a formation before I deployed to Iraq. And they were like, hey, when the crows come, that means like a lot of people are going to die. And oh, I was like, oh, shit. and I was like, oh, man, you know, like, I don't know. I'm just like one of those people that's like kind of <laughs> superstitious yeah like i kind of believe in kind of shit like that and i was like oh man and um so that's that's what i was trying to portray in that is that you know what you have each other's back or, even when something like that is coming your way you know what i mean like you support each other and dude I, and i think it goes for like what we're going through right now you know like covid and yes and, in general like but even so that's the beauty i think that's the beautiful the military it's just like you kind of grew up with these people like around you yeah like, you're always gonna have their back like just not in war like back like when you come back and let's yeah. say like it's gonna be the stupidest thing you got in a bar fight yeah it's like i want to fucking cover my fucking homeboy that we were sitting down in our yeah. rack it's like dude like this guy's from iowa this guy's from so, michigan yeah. this, this guy's guy from, 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 like, from california yeah. you know and the funny thing is is like you know, we all came from different backgrounds. And that's a really funny thing is like when you go to when you go into basic training, <laughs> you're matters. just you're just <laughs> going in there with your own like way of thinking. And and I will say the only thing that I, I did enjoy out of basic training was that, you know what, right off the bat, everybody was trying to segregate themselves mm -hmm. like, you know, it's almost kind of like prison rules. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. All right. Dick. Blacks Dick. only hang out with blacks and whites uh, only yeah. hang out with whites and Mexicans only hang out with Mexicans. But to be honest with you, like, like there. day one, they fucking squashed that shit because they were like, and I don't know, man, some people will agree with it or not. Like, but I they made us like carry each other back and forth over each other's shoulders. You know what I mean? Like all day, like all day. You so know what I mean? This is my thing. It's like, so you think like there's no such because you do the long wolf. Yeah. There's no such thing as a lone wolf in the military. Yeah. Because you always have to have each other's back. You right. stood on your print. It shows me that, like, no, like, well, people talk about the lone wolf, but. I wouldn't say that's just even the military. I think that's just be just life in general. But, like, yeah. usually, like, a lot of people, like, oh, you come from the military because you call yourself the lone yeah. wolf. But it's it's something that it's camaraderie. Yeah. It's like, it's a, it's. And I got to say, I got to like, say, too, man, I don't really feel that way anymore. You know, like, yeah. uh, to be honest with you, like uh, a lot of the El Pasoans have been like really accepting to me and, and very loving and very caring. And you know what I mean? Like and supportive. And I'm like, dude, like, you know, yeah, it's, it's like, it, like even you guys reaching out to me and, and us having this conversation today like, is like, hey, man, like I said, we met here. It's like we yeah. we come like we like it's, it's a joke for us. It's just like. A joke for us, but it's just kind of like we're all alcoholics. It sounds funny, but we play well, aren't we? Because we all fucking drink. We all go to the same spots. Yeah. The reason we go to this spots N is because not an alcoholic. 
Yeah, no, yeah no. I was gonna say it's, it's <laughs> just <laughs> Alex, but, <laughs> but no, no, he it's, uses it's, it as it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. No, no, I, I got it's what a saying. metaphor. But it's just like we go to places where music is not that loud. Yeah, we go in like I said, draw, and then someone's gonna stop by. <laughs> He's like, we don't go to fish bar. Yeah, fuck fish bar. <laughs> but we just go in. Uh, I don't know that. You don't. You don't you know did, you're, 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 you're lucky you didn't get to yeah, see that. Lucky. Is that it's, like a rich people's bar? No, no. fish bar. It's a bar that had like fish tanks, but they didn't take care of the fish in, so it always smelled like fish inside. Dude, I ordered a crawling royal on the rocks, and it was watered down before my eyes melted. It's just one of those bars that you just don't. It's want. a college bar yeah. that they didn't care. It was just like hot girls on bikinis, and that's it. And fish tanks. People, they have beer pong tables. That's all I can say. Okay. Anyways, what you were saying? But I was <laughs> sorry. I was saying like, uh, <laughs> no, it's fine. Anyway. What's going on with this? Yeah, it's okay. just fine. No, it's just like, it's we always we all go out. We have coffee. We have beers, and we talk to each other. Like if you see a creator like doing something, because personally I don't feel myself like I'm an artist. I'm an illustrator. I'm a photographer. I'm a graphic designer. Not an artist. Like I do all these things, but if I'm drawing and if, he's, if I see someone drawing, I would ask them what they're doing. Like, hey, what's going on, dude? Like, what are you doing there? And then we have a conversation and it becomes like, hey, maybe at the end of the night, we're like, hey, we should probably do a collab. Yeah. And it's, that's, I think that's the beauty about dude, hanging I, out in places where like, there's no loud yeah. sounds. Can, like, yeah. can I be honest with you? It was really awesome. Uh, this, this last little show that we did upstairs here at Bodega. Yeah. Um, it was so cool because Fox had linked me up with uh, Adrian Wolf. Sure, never, Adrian, we're going to do one with him too. I had never met this kid before and he is so amazing and he has such an awesome uh, spirit, you know, and that I was like, dude, like, let's just wing this thing and let's just go in here and like whatever try happens, and do happens. It, whatever happens, happens, you know, and, and it was so much fun. And, and, you know, and and now that boom, there's two artists who just collab together without knowing each other. Yeah. Without knowing each other. And you know what? It was awesome. Like we were like driving in my truck uh, to go pick up supplies. Um, he was playing me, you know, his band's music, yeah. the one eight hundred. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, dude, this is so awesome. And I didn't know about it. And it's so great that I met you, you know, like it's... that. that's all it takes is like just just it's, mingling and, and, it's, and it's getting like in said, with other it's people. It's just reaching your hand out. Yeah. 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 It's not even like reaching a hand doesn't mean like you actually really, yeah. really reach your hand. It's just like just talking to each other. Yeah, for and sure. And it's the same thing with uh, any kind of fucking mental illness. Like I said, like a fucking mental illness, but it's not. It's a real thing. Like just talk about it. The conversation never ends. Like I said, you got to fucking go in and just talk to people. Yeah. You never know if just buying someone a beer is going to save their life. Yeah. You don't know it's just talking to each other, like making music, making drawings, making yeah, artwork. I, I, but I'm, a lot of people are fucking selfish. And I, it sucks to say that. It yeah, I was going to say, that. I don't think it's just talking. I think it's just be a good person. Like, it doesn't take the heart just to be a good soul, just a kind, be humble. kind person. Be humble. Don't hmm. let your ego get over you. I mean, like, I know everyone says this all the time. You never know what anybody's going through. You never really know what somebody's dealing with. They might look happy on the outside, but you never really know what's going on, on the inside. Yeah. The slightest thing that you do could actually make their day and actually could make them change what the way that they're thinking. So yeah, we had this conversation with Nico and yeah. Diana. It's just like because they think it's well, not that they think, but like they find it weird that I'm a I'm a self hatred person, but that's what drives me. Yeah, it's like it sounds like to a lot of people it sounds like fucked up. It's like yeah, I hate myself, but it makes me make do more shit. It makes yeah. me work with people. It makes me meet new people. Like yeah, like I'm really close to like myself, but then. Like I said, we, me and Amber, we met here at Old Cheap Dog. Right. We traded stickers. Yeah. It's like, yeah, like we're doing it. And then like a month later, we're fucking doing this podcast right now. And it's just like us hanging out and having beers the same way we met. Right. It's like, it's not about just doing like artwork and selling it. It's not mm -hmm. about doing your photography, your music and like getting in touch <sighs> with a studio. It's about just helping each other and just having a fucking drink. A drink Especially. can change everything. Can we can we cheers to that? Yeah. Oh, what a cheers! You're not <laughs> <laughs> the last. Extra cheers. Was just a, this is uh. like beer, drinks brings people together. Like, yeah, we we have a joke like I said, being alcoholics, but we all meet at a place that we all like to hang out, and there's a reason where we hang out there. 
because there's artwork around. There's the beauty about old chip dog. You go inside the brewery, there's artwork. Go across the street, there's Galeria Lincoln. They're like, you buy your growler, you buy a four pack. You know what? I can like at the moment because of COVID, you cannot drink it out of old chip dog. Yeah. But you're gonna go across the street, um. finish that four pack, you buy yourself or with a home like someone that you met there. Yeah. It's like, dude, like, what do you do? It's like, I'm a fucking photographer. I'm a, I make business cards. Yeah. Like, you want a beer? Like, I have four beers here, dude. And then later on, he buys the next four beers. Yeah. And then it's just hanging out. Like, don't be afraid to meet people. Because that's yeah. one thing. Like, sure. that's how we started this. It's, it's about local supporting locals. And we say local supporting locals, but you're from Ohio. Yeah. And to me, you're a local. Like, you've been here for way too long. Like, once you've been here for more than six months, to me, you're a local. Because yeah. El Paso has this thing where well, you... Have you tried Chico's yet? Don't yeah. fucking talk okay. about Chico's. Dude. I'm just saying, dude. That you have. I'm not. You don't might not like it, but that's a local thing. Like you no, gotta no, no, try no, Chico's. No, 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 no. I, I get you. Like, and we've tried Chico's. Cool. Okay. My question: yeah. Have you ever tried Tony's Barbecue Pit on no. Merrill? Oh, I haven't. I'm gonna change your world. Hey, <laughs> and do it. Hey, and that's and there we go. There's conversation. Right yeah, there. like there's always. We have great fucking food, which we're also doing a food show soon with Jono. <laughs> Plug. Shout out to Jono. Get the plug. Hey, we always <laughs> you got to do the plugs, man. Yeah, like, dude, like, plug. dude, he's part of our team. How the fuck is he? I just said, I just said plug. Calmado. Chiput. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also, uh, he's a home brewer and makes beautiful beer. He is a head uh, brewer at Flix. He opened another Flix in Kansas by himself. So that's a badass thing to do. I know, man. And, to El Paso. and I think that's the thing is like, dude a lot of people are fighting so hard to like just put their dream out there you know what i mean like and and that's my thing with like these like as far as being like a teacher is like that's what i want to do is like go tell these kids hey i had so many naysayers on you know on what i mean everything like, that I on, do. on being an artist like when i was a kid and that's literally what like drove me kind of like away from like doing it at that time but i also want to come back and like tell them like no man if you really want to do it and you're dedicated, you can yeah. you can do it. I think yeah, that's the thing that's missing from everybody though. It's I think regardless of what you want to do, it's always an obvious truth. It's not gonna be easy. Regardless yeah. of what you want to do, yeah. it's gonna be difficult. Everything but you work. need to just put yourself yeah. out there, push for it. Don't let anybody knock you down. Yeah, it's okay to be realistic and whatnot. We understand, you know, obviously in the creative world, it's a lot harder to make a living. But like, a lot of times you gotta realize it's not about making we, a living, it's about making your dreams come true. When you said it, it's like it's the thing that like for me, I was never supported by my family. Yeah. Because like I, I fell in love with art when I was four years old. Yeah, and I always say this. The first painting that I ever saw, it was Lil the first from H.R. Garger, one of my favorite artists. And I, I saw it and I was like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. This is what I want to do. At four years old, when I was 13, my parents asked me what I want to do. It's like, I want to start the art. Yeah. And that's when I started paying rent to my parents. Yeah. Rent to live in my own fucking home yeah. that I grew up. <laughs> and then I had to, in Juarez, you had, for public school, you had to pay actually money to go to public school. Yeah. And I had to work and it's fine. Like I moved out when I was 18 and all that, but I made it work. It's just like, yeah. And, then, I'm, and my dad, like, like to this point is like, he said, it's like, well, the only reason like, I appreciate you is because you never asked for money. Yeah. My, they pay for my brother's school. Don't get me wrong. Like my brother's a favorite. We all know that he's six years older than I am. Automotive engineers, like five for fucking specialties. And like, I will always like me and my brother don't really have a communication, but if I have a car question, I'll go to him. Yeah. Like I grew up fixing mm. cars like we did, but we had that, like, that's what we have. We have cars, but it's the same thing. Like we don't talk about it. We make noises. We make fucking grunts. Like if you see, if you ever like get to see me and my brother, it's just like, mm, mm, cool. <laughs> yeah. that's it. That's how we know we're okay. Yeah. We don't mention anything. It's that's how we do it. Yeah. But it's the same thing. Like, even though we don't have a full conversation, we know that we're all doing fine. And it's just like, hey, can you help with your cart? We know the grunt for that. Right. Like, it sounds stupid like because that's my family thing. But it's just like, yeah, like, we grew up in that situation. It's like, we yeah. do this because we want to fucking bring people in. He has, he has invested in a lot of, like, local mm -hmm. body shops and all that. Yeah. And he owns his whole body shop here in El Paso for classics. And it's like, yeah, when when I need to pay my cars, it's like, hey, dude, like, what days do I have open for you? Well, yeah. What days do you have open or with his partner? Like, I want to go paint my cart. 
But and, it's the same thing. It's like, yeah. if I want to bring someone in, like, I'll fucking ask him. Like, I don't care if he talks shit about it. <clears throat> and there's he's part of another podcast and he likes to talk shit and I, all that. But that's how we get along. I, w- I would say, too, like, you know, like, for any, like, young kid that's out there that's like, hey, man. Don't be afraid. You know, I want to I wanna be an artist. Like, dude, I, I did that. Like, my mom... My mom, look, my mom was tough nails. You know what I mean? She told me, she told me, she told me, said, hey, look, if basically like on graduation night, she was like, if you go to this party, you're out of the house. Yeah. You know, and I was like, oh, shit. I said, mom, I apologize, but I got to go to that party. You know what I mean? It's so so funny because uh, when I turned 18, it was my graduation party. And that was the day that I moved out. Yeah, and, and I'm telling you right now, like I I left, I left after that party. I went to Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I was still painting. I was still doing my drawings or whatever, and I was still trying to sell my paintings and art. But I also had to like work at the same time. Yeah, like, dude, like, you're not gonna just, you're not just gonna go out there and be like, yeah, I'm just gonna be a painter. No, like, no, dude, be, you be have to creating. understand. You have to understand that people, especially when you're first just starting out, like. I think, dude, it you, got, you have to be a, a creative yeah. person. You it have takes to be a lot of fucking you, work. Yeah, you have to be like, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you some stuff from back in the day, and you'll be like, oh man, that is crap. I think you know what I mean, like, yeah. and 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 I think that's what my mom saw is like, look, you need to go get your education first. If you don't get your education, then you're not going to be what you aspire to be, right? And I'm like, Which man, is- whatever, mom, I'm going to do what I want to do. And I did it, and I went out, and I, dude, I, I'm not gonna lie, man, I had, it, a, yeah. I had a great yeah, time. Yeah, which I mean, I think which a lot, of, a lot of kids, though, they don't really realize, like, yeah, yeah, look, like, listen to your parents. A lot of times, it sounds like they don't know what they're talking about, but they really no, do. No, because they've already been through it. They really they do know do. what they yeah, ta- yeah. they're talking about, because but, yeah. I think that's a lesson a lot of kids need to learn and realize. I think for me, this is the other thing, is like, you don't, for me, I'm not saying for everybody, this is for me, like, disclaimer, it's Alex's ball, your alcoholic dad. I'm about to give you your own podcast, dude. No, I can't do that. Give me your own show. We're going to just have. Uh, talk but to it's the just house. like. Listen to your parents. I know. But it's. Listen to your parents. Uh, sure. But the oh, same thing. Like, ah, shit. It's okay. Oh, fuck. I want to grab the other one. The other one. Ah. Anyways. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> parents are flying all over the place here. If you're listening, you have to watch this shit. <laughs> um, but I was saying, like, it's it's thing where. For me, I don't think. Nowadays, back in the day, I would say it, go to college. But nowadays, it's just like, you don't really need to go to college. Like, well, and, and you're absolutely right. It's, you, it's, it sucks to say it because we grew up with this mentality. It's like, you want to have a good job. You want to be making it good. You have to go to get an education. But nowadays, it's just like, you got to network. And I think, maybe that's, I think maybe that's a different tool that kids have today that we didn't have back then. Like I oh, think I sure, think for dude. I think for my generation, especially bro, social media, bro. I am thirty nine. <laughs> you know Jeez. what I mean? Like We're back in the day, <laughs> back in the day, we didn't have all this all this stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? We didn't have social media. We didn't have we didn't have all that. You know? So I remember like people are like, dude, if you want to make it, then you have to have college. You know? And I was like, oh crap! And then and the pressures were on. You know, yeah. and it was like, and I remember that's why I went to Pittsburgh Art Institute. You know, what's really funny. A lot of people tell me that Art Institute wasn't going to do anything for you anyways. Like that. But you learn something a, new, though. Like, no so matter, yeah, that can be shit, but you learn you, something. You have to know. go through. You have to go through some trials. You have to go through some. Uh, you just got to figure out what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. For yeah. You. I say like you got to. It sounds really fucked up, but you got to eat some ass that you don't want to. <laughs> but it's going to make you grow. <laughs> Dude, I think you're absolutely right when you say that. I totally <laughs> ate some ass when I joined the military. She, she, she. No, I'm come never, on. I'm never wrong. I like that. I like that he said that. I like that he said that. It sounds funny. Your though. metaphors are always so funny. But I like the way you said it. You're definitely gonna have to <laughs> yeah, eat some you're ass. Like, you're gonna get, you're gonna get so many buttholes oh, that they're gonna be the worst thing, but. Don't get me wrong. It's a good thing I put the explicit content on our Spotify. And but can I tell Apple's you? Podcast. Because I ate some ass. You got here. I got here. Right? Like, no, like, seriously, like, I had to fucking do exactly what you were saying. Yeah. I had to go join the military. I had to go, like, go through all kinds of experiences. You never know. You never know. You never oh know. Oh, my gosh. 
It's like you never know what you're going through, and you're gonna meet so many amazing people. Like it's the same thing. It's like oh, like nah, I'm I'm really open whatever that I fucked up and everything that I did, and especially because I'm a retired professor, I guess. I have to legally say that now. Shout out to Brock, my lawyer. <laughs> it's it has it's been But five can podcasts I, can, that I, I can I be real with you, man? Like when you talk about the Getting eating that? of the ass. Yeah. All right. I had to go and join the military, right? But I had to go do the hard route and go do like tours in Iraq and Afghanistan yeah, to figure out that, to that. figure out like what hard work was. You know what I mean? And not only that, like. I'm glad I did that because it exposed me to so many different cultures. And, and I think that that's a huge fucking problem with everybody, everybody yeah, in this fucking world. Because like, if you talk to a kid it's like, I'm at gonna UTEP, this on Instagram if you talk it. to, if you talk to a kid at UTEP, it's like, Hey, what are your experiences? Oh, well, I've only grown up here in El Paso. And my dad told me that fucking all white people are bad. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. hey, man, then you're going to grow up thinking that all oh, white people are bad. Which they're and, like, they're not fucking bad. But I fucking get it because then you fucking had the kid that fucking rolled in here and did what he did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then it's like, oh, shit. So, like, I, I'm going to tell you this right now. Like, the day after the fucking shooting, the day yeah. after the fucking shooting, there was a quince. There was a quince that I went to, Right. And I rolled up in this quince and they said, you shouldn't fucking be here. Like what? Like no joke. What and I was fuck? like, bro, I've been in this family fucking for like Ten forever. Years, yeah. You know what I mean? And they're like, no, no, you don't understand because nobody likes white people right now. And I'm like, yeah, but this doesn't fucking matter, man. Like, and, and I get it. Look, yeah. I get it. I get it. And then I, and then I'm also like, let me discredit that and say like, look, you know what, man, let me tell you something. I was held up at gunpoint in Pittsburgh uh, three times by by uh, African Americans, right? Yeah. And <clears throat> I I never have once have been like, hey, every I just day. I think every dude that's fucking African American fucking pulls a gun on me, right? I just don't do it because you can't fucking group people like you that. You can't. It's it's now this is are like, we, are we going into politics? I we should a little bit, but a little bit, but it's fine. Well, we'll have this we be our, a, we'll we have this be our segue out. Because a lot of these like but moments. At the end of the day, I feel like what what the main message is is like, look, media, everything, right? Like, yeah, is yeah. going to fucking guide us to be like, hey, let's fucking hate each other, and we shouldn't, man. Like, we really shouldn't, and we honestly need like a lot of people to just like have open conversations with each other, okay. and just dude, open your hand, dude. Don't open don't judge hand. anybody, man. Like, well, don't. We'll, we'll say this. Uh, at least I'll say this. Um, <laughs> I always kind of think that's the problem. Um, there isn't a peaceful, open conversation that's possible these right. days. No, I'll say this um, real quick. Um, I think kind of one of the biggest issues now is that we can't have a peaceful and open conversation about everything. Because the second a lot of people start hearing things that they don't agree call. with or that they don't like, they get on the offensive and the defensive instead of just listening. And trying to understand what the other person's talking about. Even though, like, I'll agree, sometimes the other person's talking, you're like, man, you're a fucking idiot. But at the same time, it's like, you gotta let them talk what they believe and right. try to hear them out. Yeah, you right. To listen. understand why they're thinking this, yeah. why they believe this, and then say, okay, yeah. so this is why you believe this. I'm gonna tell you why this is why what I believe mm -hmm. and see if we can find a common ground. Exactly. That I think that's kind of the issue nowadays. Everybody right away just, is doesn't like having that kind of conversation with and it's not even just politics it's like what you're you know what you're about the mental health yeah. it could be about everything anything that doesn't really console come i'm sorry uh doesn't really follow the norm doesn't really follow what you're taught and you're supposed to be this, the normal um it's kind of the taboo it's kind of the thing that everybody is a little bit scared of and just it's just that they don't understand yeah, exactly and i think that's the hard part nowadays especially with being the outland the outlandish government that I think we kind of have is more about who has the who has the, the bigger dick the Not bigger the, the actually that's yeah, yeah. The, who has the bigger dick instead of who has the smartest right. brain <laughs> yeah. um, and I think that's kind of the thing now what we were saying earlier which kind of the stigma with America that America is like the greatest country in the world and America this and America that Fuck you. it's time for people to kind of accept and believe like look we might not be the greatest country in the world 
we might be the country that's fallen behind in some areas. And yeah, well, at yeah. one point we were the country that was leading the charge in all parts of the world, in mathematics, science, and, and culture, and music, and art, and everything. But at some point, I kind of feel like we lost our way and people can't accept it. Ooh. And until you accept it, and until you realize we're not what we are supposed to be, right. we can't get to the point where we should be. Right. Yeah, we're, and, we're eating um, ass. We're eating ass like, yeah. again. Dude, like dude, Alex said, we're eating ass. Like, dude, when, when, I, when I go back to Ohio, I always explain it to people like this. Lovers. Now, now <laughs> think about this, like, because people in Ohio, are not anywhere near close to this border, right? Yeah. Yeah, which now, so, I think El Paso is a beautiful, like, it's yeah. so beautiful because we have the fucking border. Yeah. We can eat, sounds like, and sounds no. wrong, but ass, but it's just like, we create all this shit. Yeah. And we communicate um, with each other and we build this community. But also too, like, and this is what I tell people in Ohio, is like, especially when I go back to Ohioans, you know, because every once in a while I go back and I visit and I tell them like, hey, imagine this. I just want you to picture this in your mind. You're on, because you guys are talking about a wall, right? Yeah. I said, picture this. You're on one side of the wall and you got a fucking tiger chasing your ass, right? Oh, what shit. Are you, what are you going to do? You're going to fucking climb that fucking wall. Yeah. And you're going to climb that wall and you're going to want to get the fuck over the fucking wall. But guess what happens? Then you get on the other side of the fucking wall and you're there's fucking another sweet. fucking tiger. Like, dude, like it sucks. Like this whole situation with like everything fucking sucks. Like... And I'm going to tell you this too about about when when I did my service in Iraq, my purpose, my own personal purpose in Iraq was to help people, right? Gosh. I felt like, dude, because and and you know afterwards we can go through pictures and whatnot where I'm you know where I'm trying to help these kids, you know what I mean, help these families, you know. But the thing is, is like, dude, if you're not fucking helping people, then what are you? You know what I mean? You're the fucking tiger, you know, like you, you can't be the fucking tiger. Well, I'm, you, you got to fucking what be you, what you're saying, I think is very, very true. And what's very, very representative of what this community is right yeah. here. Um, I think a lot of people just don't really understand everybody. I always say this all the time. I feel like and it's crazy. Um, I, I thought I thought about this a while ago. Um, I read an article that said um, I think it was 83 percent of students and American students today don't think that the Holocaust was real. A lot of them apparently believe that it was a myth. And I think (laughs) when I read that, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like to think that the Holocaust was a myth, like just says to, I think a lot of what people don't seem to understand is like history tends to repeat itself. If you don't learn from it, if you don't really realize what happened, you're not gonna be able to prevent it in the future. Yeah. And, um, I've always, I kind of think that that's the thing that people don't really understand now. Like you don't really realize why the 13 colonies became what they were, why the revolution began as to why, what was happening then. Uh, They don't seem to understand what the whole reason was that they didn't want to be a part of the tyrant King George's uh, colony here in the the US. They don't really understand like we weren't always the US. We were part of the, you know, fucking the 13 colonies, the British, and we were supposed to be that. And they don't really realize what the fuck really this country was built on. And I think it's just that thought that, like we were saying, that there's just this stigma that seems to think America's number one. America's the greatest. Nobody can beat America. And I'm like, you guys are fucking idiots. Like, it's a matter of America's supposed to be the land of opportunity. America's supposed to be the country where you're given that chance. So you're like, you know what? I'm going to do something where I wasn't able to do before. Here's my opportunity now. And yes, I do think there needs to be borders. Fine. I agree with that. But I don't think that it should be to the sense and the most difficult senses where you can't even get in just because they don't yeah. want you here. No, no, no. Yes, people about, people definitely need fucking help. Yeah. Like, there yes, is shit yes, going like, on. We, just think about there is the, shit going it's, on. It's just a matter of we have to be also people to realize, look, there's fucking really just shit whole countries where people can't live their lives. We, yeah. just think we about should be an option or... for them to get away and look, have Absolutely. a chance at a life. Yeah, but just think about this. Like back in the day, like last year, we brought back the fucking city cards. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. A lot of people didn't take advantage of them. Yeah. It sucks. Don't get me wrong. But back in the day, it took you 50 cents to cross the border from in the same fucking train track. Yeah. From Juarez to El Paso. Yeah. It's like, come on. Like, we're, we're, we didn't have a border. Yeah. We had a border, but not a real border. It's like a mental border. Like, it's an illusion. And it's still an illusion in a way. 
Because either way, all countries are united. Like either way, I'm gonna tell you, you build a fucking wall, Mexicans are gonna find a way to get over that wall. Yeah, they're like, yeah. We, either we, way, we, I'm but, gonna tell you that right now. And I'll tell you too, man. Like, look, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Like, my my mother-in-law is is from Juarez, right? Oh, she's yeah. a resident my here. Parents are she's from a Juarez. she's a resident here in El Paso. <laughs> and I'll tell you that, you know, hey, when that when that dude came into office, we were really fucking scared that she was going to get fucking sent back. And I'm like, dude, that's that's my fucking mother-in-law. You know what I mean? Like yeah, and, she's and, been- and she's not fucking hurting anybody and she's not doing anything yeah, wrong. Yeah, but that's and- the thing. Like it's just the people like I'm sorry to say this. I fucking Okay, we don't get into politics for this. I know we, we fucking do, but um, we went from art to politics. Yeah, but it kind of um, comes to it. Yeah, it has to come to I it. I hate, I hate, I hate the ignorance that is in office and the ignorance that people just follow because the guy has billions of dollars. Yeah, well, and, because this, like, and because bring somebody, the motherfucker down? and because somebody Here. says they're stealing your jobs, I'm like, what fucking jobs are they stealing? Let me tell you something. Oh, I guarantee you, none of you people would want those jobs to begin with. None of you people would want the pay that though that they're getting paid for those fucking jobs. None of you people would fucking do the things that they're doing right now just to have a chance to have a life here. Um, is, they're not is, living off welfare. They're not getting all the shit that you're getting least, and tra- no in your trailer homes. Yeah, they're living off whatever they can fucking do to live. This is the one thing I'm all say. for the sake of just having a chance. Yeah. So. I, I really, like that you said that. It's a Say, matter it's the sake of having a fucking chance. It's a matter of understanding right. what the truth is as a matter of what somebody is telling you. And that's yeah. the problem that we have. Dude, just look at JJ's fucking car watch. He fucking jokes about it like, oh, it's like he is a big Trump supporter, but it, all his workers are Mexican. And he loves them and he supports, like, he actually protects them. Yeah. It's like, I want them here. But, dude, like, we come here because one, Amazing food, and you clean our cars. <laughs> Is that why they came here? Because of the amazing food? No, no, like, we go there. That's what I meant. It went somewhere. Around. Leave it to Alex to say <laughs> Amazing food. Fuck, I mean, the food is fuck fucking the opportunity. amazing. Hey, bro, I want the food. There's a reason no, but, uh, why this belly is going it, on. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying it, like, in, in a way where it's like, they make, like, I will go there in the morning oh, and God. fucking, like, great ass food. I'm going to have a yeah. badass breakfast burrito and it's gonna be a tex-mex breakfast burrito yeah don't get me wrong like they have like the texas and the mexican way like to do it and it's badass and like dude like he is a big trump supporter which we're gonna get like we say politics but as soon as it's like this motherfucker like supports both sides he hates that he supports both sides but he still does it yeah and it's something like like fucking my one of my closest friends made a fucking mural in the side and i'm gonna say like i'm sorry but kristen like you made a ma- amazing mural in the back why yeah. is that i'm sorry no because she's like <laughs> not sorry but it's like i don't know if she wants me to tell it it's like i don't know if she wants sorry. me to say it but she made an amazing mural Ooh. kristen apalaka made an amazing mural there yeah. and they came in <clears> a, <throat> they came in on a show for hulu and they didn't talk about the mural the reason of the mural and i was just like that's stupid like why wouldn't you go to that restaurant slash car wash and not talk about the mural it's yeah. a mural that actually talks about being two different communities yeah. from like texas to juarez to chihuahua <clears throat> and it's it's a beautiful thing yeah. it's something that we grew up with here and like you coming from Ohio, it's like you see it yeah and no. it's just like and if you even listen to like my wife's story it's like man dude I, if she wasn't here i would have never met her you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, that's my wife. That's that's the person I'm spending the rest of my life with. Yeah. And, and you learn so much from it. Yeah, yeah absolutely, like, man. It's and, a that's, and that's what I get to is like, dude, and it goes back to the whole like grabbing each other by the hands and pulling each other up. You know, like, dude, hey, I get it, man. There's there's some messed up stuff that goes on over there, but there's messed up stuff that goes all, all yeah. over the world. Everywhere. And, and, and to be honest with you, like, we literally just like, I know this sounds so like hippie, right? Like, Hi. but we literally need to like help each other out. Like I'm telling you right now, like when, when I went to Iraq, I remember one time and I just wanted to say that like, I, my, my interpreter who's from Iraq was like, do you mind if I look at your pictures with you? He saw that I was looking through my home photos, you know, I said, sure. And he sat down on my, on my bed with me and he started crying and I'm like, dude, are you okay? And he goes, you know what? I will never in my entire lifetime have what you have. You know what I mean? He goes, and that, that fucked me up. You know what I mean? Because I was like, dude, 
he's totally right. Like he doesn't even have the same opportunities that I have. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't know, man, there's this, well, there's this part of me that's I like, think it's don't be afraid to learn what people are going through. Exactly. Because a lot, well, like we, we went back to mental issues in yeah. a way because it's always been like, just fucking talk to people. It's always a story is going to be different. We yeah. might grew up in the same spot of town, you yeah. know, Paso and Juarez, whatever, but it's a different story. Yeah. Like maybe like I'm always open about like I'm a, I've been an open person after like whatever happened to me. I've been always open about like, yeah, I was in middle school. My fucking second day, I got stabbed <clears throat> in middle school in Juarez. Yeah. The only reason I got stabbed it was because I was not in a gang. I was the only punk kid. There you go. I was the only guy that didn't listen to fucking like reggaeton and all like right. solo music. Like not saying that it was a thing, but it was just like, I listened to punk. I listened to Misfits. I grew up with that music. I grew yeah. up with the Rolling Stones. I grew up with the AS, ACDC. I grew up with all this shit, but I got stabbed because I was in a fucking gang and it sucks. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Like it sucks to know that, but as soon as it's like, it's not the same. It's not the same story, my story, for the same guy that went to the same school with me. Yeah. Yeah, it's different. He might grow <clears> up in the gang, but it's a different story. Like, yeah, I went to the restroom and we had to have two people. Every time I need, like, it's it sounds stupid. Every time I needed to go to the restroom, I had to ask a friend, like, hey, let's go together. Because there was no doors. Yeah. And it was like, I was, sounds fucked up. I was taking a dump and he had to be my door because there was people cracking heads in a fucking stool yeah and it's mm -hmm. it's stupid like it's fucking stupid don't get me wrong like i grew up with that shit it sucks i saw a lot of <clears> my <throat> friends die in front of me i and it's not the same with you like you saw your friends dying war yeah. which makes in my head makes a little more sense it was war mm -hmm. it was something that grew up from political views personal views and all that but in my situation it was just like uh different gangs yeah it's not the same like no it, yeah it was the same culture but you grew up from the fucking kings and i apparently i grew up in a city in the zona centro according to like the mexican situation at the right. time it was just like it was different but i didn't have anybody like i grew, i went to a private school i learned english to a private school and i i was born in el paso i had we uh the reason i went to school in juarez because i was we had a family business that I'm, a, I'm Lebanese. It's like we built it in Juarez. It was an ice cream shop, and that's how I grew up. I saw, I see a lot of people like died in front of me. Yeah. But it's different from your situation, of course. Yeah. But then no. it's just we come together. It's like no, like your story is different from my story. But let's make something come up from it. Right. Let's build something. Let's not just block yourself or like, yeah, I got fucked up. I got. I had to no. eat a lot of ass, but no, dude, like, <laughs> I love that. It's, it's going to be I my favorite word ass. now. Eat a lot of ass. All in all, guys, but what we're trying to say it. is everybody be there for everybody. Everybody love everybody. Hey, absolutely. In, the, in the words of the great Jackie, Jackie Moon, Moon, everybody love everybody. There you go. But, uh, it's not even that. <laughs> but, uh, um, oh, yeah. cheers. I, cheers, guys. I um, appreciate you guys having me on. No, no yeah, we, we fucking love really, the fact that again, guys, we, we want to say thank you to Brian for being here with us today. You know, uh, make sure you guys follow him on uh, Brian. If you want to plug anything, your Instagram, Facebook, anything like that right now. Emberflow Art. Just follow Emberflow Art. And um, hey, treat everybody with dignity and respect. And um, yeah, man. That's fucking beautiful. Dude. Love <laughs> each other, dude. Yeah, just love each other. Yeah, man. so we want to thank Brian for being with us today, talking about what's important to him. Uh, everybody, please keep in mind. You never know what anybody's going through. Don't be scared to talk about what you got going Don't on. Don't be afraid to reach out to somebody, out. reach out to a friend, even if it's just for you want help, regardless of what it is. If you want to talk help, something, dude, like, just, fucking just reach out to somebody. Uh, remember, we're all human. We're all here for each other. Also, shout outs to Old Chief Dog. Not only yes to Old Chief Dog being our sponsors, Old Chief Dog allowing us to record here today because right now with COVID and everything that's going on, uh, you saw if you're watching this, if you're not only listening to Spotify and Apple Podcasts, we are having beers. I'm not fucking gonna lie about that. We all are gonna have beers here. That's how we fucking create this community. Drinks brings people together. It's stupid. It's dumb, but not really. 
we actually enjoy the same things that everybody beyond enjoys. the drinks the messages it's make sure like, you guys are supporting each yeah. other out there support your local businesses support your local breweries support your local shops uh we want to help each other out especially right now with everything that's going on those also, are the first those uh, are the first to take the biggest hit beyond the larger companies so make sure you guys are supporting your local breweries your local restaurants your local artists your local musicians whatever you got got there and always lo uh, support local old cheap dog look at it at 3900 Rosa Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79905. Me and Amber Flo have a cigar from We Told Us, which is a lot of sponsor from us. Thank you, Fernando. Thank, Thank you, Mia. You guys are amazing. If you guys want to hang out and meet new people, go to uh, 216 uh, West Franklin Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79901, uh, right across the baseball stadium. And mm -hmm. have a cigar, dude. It's fucking, you know, you can bring an old sheep dot dot beer. If you don't want that, you can bring your own bottle and just enjoy a beautiful cigar. Talk to someone that you don't know. There's a lot of people hanging <clears> out there. We're all creators. I like to say that uh, there's no such things nowadays of artists because we all create stuff. We can be, you can call us artists, but we all create stuff. We can be illustrators, photographers, musicians, and we're creators. It's artists, it's a word to me that's kind of died in a way because we all create stuff. For me, it's more of a creator. But just go down and just enjoy whatever you want, the beer, a whiskey, just hang out, talk to each other. And just remember that the talk never stops. And just like we always say, support locals. Uh, shout out to everybody that's wanna hang out with us, wanna just talk about, you can always come out to our shows, message us. We have a website now, www.com, six feet under and just check everything that's going there so again that website is www.sixfeetunderstudios.com uh, be sure to go on there you can find all of our podcasts on there yeah. our music our local spotlight which will be featuring every person that we talk to every single every single new podcast will put something about them so you guys can reach out to them um as well as our anything feature that we put out there any future content that's going to be our first that's going to be your main point to see everything that we got going on uh, you'll find links to our youtube instagram spotify and apple podcasts through that website so again six feet under studios.com uh, again thank you to our sponsors <laughs> Oh, Cheap Dog and Vitolas for helping us out with everything that they've done for us. Be sure you guys are checking them out, as well as any other local artists, local businesses, and local shops that you got going on. Uh, thank you guys again for listening or watching us today, uh, and we'll see you guys next time. And don't forget to stay hard, because <laughs> you got to stay hard out there. <laughs> thank you, guys. Bye. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>